Hey everybody, DJ Cutman here. As part of a reward for hitting our $5,000 goal on the Quick 100 Bundle on Groupies, I'm going to be showing you a little bit about how I make beats using Ableton Live. So to get started, I asked my Facebook friends and audience to suggest some video game songs that they would like to hear remixed. So, first step, we're going to find our sample, find what video game tunes uh, we're going to do, and uh, go from there. Let me just crank open Facebook window. If you haven't liked my page on Facebook, it's just facebook.com slash DJ Cutman. And uh, if, you, if you follow the page, then you'll be sure to very rarely see my updates because it's Facebook. We got a good little handful of comments here. Let's listen to these tunes. Bow. Oh look, I was just playing Smash. Let's hear a Mega Man Battle Network theme. This is pretty cool already. Unfortunately, I think it's kind of a rough recording, so we're gonna skip over that. Uh, well, let's just go from top down. Ooh. What is this destiny of an empire emperor? Oh my gosh, this tune is cool. I like this one a lot. This looks like an old school Nintendo game. Comment says it was made in house at Capcom. PMG PSW, thank you for the subscription. Thanks so much. Is Twitch Alerts up on this thing? Let me get it up there for you. Now, if anybody follows or uh, subscribes or anything, there'll be a cute little thing pop up on the screen. There it is. Thank you for supporting my stream, PMG PSW. I really do appreciate it. Oh, real cripple puppy. Okay, let's refresh. I'll look for your submission, real cripple puppy. 13 comments now. So I really liked that one. Where did it go? Destiny of an Emperor. It's now at the top of the list. Thank you, Facebook, for moving it around. Oh, Xenoblade Chronicles. We got some requests for that last night. Oh, this is... Did you guys hear Smooth McGroove's cover of this? Because it's awesome. That's a great one. I'm gonna like it. The drums are like a little in the front, which is also gonna be a little tough for remixing. But what a great theme, huh? Yeah, check out Smooth Regrew's uh, cover of Warplane. He just posted like a week ago. Oh. What a great theme. Great. Oh, somebody requested the song I already did. Well, that's my favorite when that somebody does that because then I can just go ahead and be like, well. Oh. And for those not familiar, this is my version. Oh, somebody requested Electrodome from Mario Kart, and I gotta tell you, I hate that tune. And I hate it, I and mean, hate's a strong word. I don't hate that song. I don't hate anything about the new Mario Kart. But it's like kind of weird and housey, and I just, I just, I just thought I could've, I didn't like it. I just didn't like it. Ooh, Crystallis. There's that other old NES game. It's alright, but it's not totally, totally, totally going. Tron Bond suggesting some Azure Striker Gun Vault. 
This soundtrack was pretty highly produced, which is awesome, but again, a little bit tougher to remix. I love remixing old Nintendo games because um, the arrangement has to be so sparse to fit on the cartridge that leaves a lot of room. Get to it. Yeah, see? This would be a tough remix. Also, not a great recording. Somebody not linking YouTube video, not following instructions. Ooh. A link to the track. Oh, these are the spirit tracks. Ooh, this is cool. And I actually have the soundtrack from Nintendo. I'll show it off. So we can get a nice CD quality rip. This would actually is a really good candidate. Let me make sure I have it. This is full steam ahead. Trackless. Oh, War Plans on here too. Yeah, I do. I have this one. And War Plane. So maybe since I was playing Smash to start as the pre show, maybe we should do a Smash track. No, Skittles, we're still searching for samples right now, but I think we're going to do a Smash one. Although, Diddy Kong Racing, Ben Briggs has done two amazing Diddy Kong Racing albums. He did this tune. Okay, we heard that. Uh, Battle Toads. Let's listen to this one. We can make a beat out of this one easy. It's so quiet, though. Let's hear a luck man stage. <laughs> This is a great theme. You guys added more requests? Okay, let me check. Also, rough recording though. It's hard to get, it's easy to get the, the Nintendo music that's sourced though. We can like just drop the NSF file into an emulator and just export it as a wave. It's awesome. Ooh, Super Mario RPG. Raz, I see your fester's quest. Again, really, lots of really big drums in that one is going to be a little tricky. So, uh, where's that fester's quest? I saw Graz suggest it. Bump. The lowest quality recording ever. Well, maybe not, but a very, very quiet recording. All right, so listen, all great suggestions. Um, but I think I'm going to go with the Smash track. Um, because I have the CD in front of me, um, and because we won't have to rip it off of YouTube, which will be nice, uh, We there's two I really wanted to hear. Guar Planes. Plane. Guar Plane. And um, what else? What else? What else? What was the other one? Spirit Tracks. Bum, 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 bum. bum. Oops. All right, let's listen to the Spirit Tracks one because I think that that one is going to be really, really fun. 
I'm gonna listen to it while my computer is transferring it to my other computer. Oh, let me um, let me show the stream link. Part of music production you don't get to see. They're waiting around for stuff to happen. They're waiting around for files to transfer. We can get ready. I've got cameras covering up everything. Make a new Ableton project. Getting ready to go. Any minute now, we're gonna have some songs come up in this folder. Cooking and watching the stream is difficult. Antron will soon it will be playing some. Oh, good night, Tron. Oh my gosh, so late. Yeah, you'll be able to watch this again, Antron, for sure. That default Windows background, though. Hey, it's purple, though, dude. Purple. Space guy, what's going on? We are only seconds away from the Dropbox sending the files over to the other thing. Waiting around is a big part of making music, Micah says. That's true. That is true. Um, it's not a glamorous part, but you know, we do it. We do it. All right. JSL girl, hi. Hi. Uh, yes, we chose some songs. Uh, we got Guar Plane and Full Steam Ahead from the new Smash Brothers soundtrack is what we settled on. There's some great, they were all very good uh, requests, but I thought that these two, I, one of them has got to work. The thing sends things from a thing to a thing. So the first thing that we notice, I drag these tunes right into Ableton. We are going now. And what Ableton did is it scanned it and tried to uh, detect what the tempo is. Ableton does a pretty good job, but it always kind of messes up the start points. So I'm going to pull this over here to the start of the song. I'm going to play it. And now I can turn on my metronome up here. And um, check to see if it's all working. Sounds like it's there. Robo Phoenix, thank you for that sub. Three, three months in a row, thank you. Thank you so much. I copy these files off of my uh, official Nintendo Smash Brothers soundtrack um, onto, um, with iTunes. You know, Apple's got the same team that makes Logic, so they really know their stuff. So we can hear the metronome clicking along. So that totally works. Let's hear full steam ahead now. Oh, how is the how is my mic level to the music level? Can you guys hear the tune? Hear my voice okay?
This tune I like a lot. All right, so there's been this new way I've been making beats lately. Um, it's kind of like, it's very similar to the way I started making beats and then I like got into a different type of production. But I'll show you that, um, I'll show you what I've been doing recently and we'll try it out, we'll see how it works. Uh, first thing first though, I'm gonna throw a limiter on my master channel, which will just keep OBS from clipping and also make the track sound good. Like my little hack and slash master that I really like. Probably shouldn't be doing this this early on, but I'll keep everything sounding nice. All right, so just so you know, um, somebody in the chat called it out. The track sounds slower, and that's true. Once we bring a track into Ableton, Ableton's automatically going to scan it, add these warp markers in, and then. Um, we're going to, somebody said something in the chat, I got distracted. Um, this chat next to the Ableton window, not used to it, but that's okay. We're going to get through it. Um, so now we can control the tempo. It'll be whatever we want. You can see when we get really slow, stuff starts to get weird. So if we want to do something silly, speed it up super fast. Just show you how easy it is to like put some beats down in Ableton. I have a feeling like I'm gonna really like, this is supposed to be like a goofy little quick thing, but I have a feeling I'm gonna like it. Get the Centauri loops. There it is. We got a nice drum beat over here. This was not what I was planning at all, but whatever. And now just because I'm a goofball, I'm gonna put some trap hi-hats over it. And you guys can all um, love it or hate it. It's gonna be one way or another. Well, we did this. That was quick. All right, so what I wanted to show you before I got distracted and made that cool little thing, um, which actually seems like a pretty cool idea. I'm gonna save it. This is the Groupies Twic 100 Reward remix. So, uh, turn it off, turn it off. Uh, great thing about Ableton now, oh, let me put on my thing. A cool thing about Ableton is even without any controllers, you can make music. So you don't have to buy any stuff. I got my mouse, my goofy old trackball from outer space. I got my keyboard and that's it. No pianos, no MIDI controllers, no expensive gear at all, just the software. By hitting Command K, it turns on what's called keyboard mapping mode, where I can make different parts of the song activate from my keyboard. So I'll say that stopping things is zero, starting beats is one and two.
What's going on here? Okay, so we just gotta crop off the beginning. I'm just gonna make a little note over here to launch tempo. So this means that I'm gonna basically assign this section to be a certain tempo. Space guy. That's fine, buddy. Trippy PC, you can use those numbers to scrub in in a sound in SoundCloud? I didn't even know. If it's not free, but you can get a 30-day demo and try it out if you'd like. These two tunes are pretty similar, too. Alright, so let's go over to Guar Plan for a second, because I wanted to show you how I've been making beats recently, because I have this keyboard. Richie, I'm kind of bouncing back between Full Steam Ahead and Guar Plan. I'm going to show you two different ways of making beats. So the first little method I showed you real quickly uh, was using loops, and um, we're going to expand on that do some mixing and some stuff stuff to make it sound really good so it's not just like a naked loop over a naked sample which is the bare bones you know we we can hear that it sounded pretty good but there's a lot more we can do to make it sound like those two exist in the same world but i've been using this other way of making beats lately mostly hip hop beats every morning i've been like making myself a little beat so let's pick out some i'm going to turn the sample down really quiet and pick out some uh, some drums to manually play on the keyboard Like that 909. Let's hide these loops. And I'm gonna pull a, pull a few different kick drum samples together. Some of these are weird. I like that one. This is gonna be a really fun beat, by the way. I can already like feel it. All right, so I picked a couple kicks. I'm gonna try them out. Uh, let's pick some snares. And actually, I find that it's pretty important to, uh, to have multiple snares. Sometimes I only have one kick, but having uh, layers of snares are really gonna help it come through really big and strong. I like the fam snare. Whoa. I like that funk one. Ooh, I love this one, light. Maybe I can get rid of one of these other ones. Yeah, this funk one's messy, actually. I like Jaws. So you can see they all have a different quality. It's kind of t this one's got a top, kind of like a toppiness, but also sounds organic, like a real drum. This one's got a noisiness and strong mid-range. This one's got the thump. So we have these three different elements that are all gonna come together to make a really powerful snare. Let's listen to our kicks now. A thud, this is comparable. You may not need them both. I'm not totally sure about these kicks, so let me let me go back and revisit. Are the snares I really like? What are the extra large kicks? <laughs> Whoa. This is music production. I 
I like this ringy one. Let's get rid of the original. Uh, whatever. Okay. So now I, you saw me press the keyboard on my mouse. The keyboard on my mouse. So here's the keyboard. What I'm going to do. Oh, I need a hi hat too. Last sample again. And we only need one of these, so it's not going to be too crazy. And then we'll be able to make this beat. Oh my god, I'm like ready to ready for bed. Clean hi hat. Yeah. All right, so check this out. I'm gonna map these drums to my keys on the keyboard, so I'll be able to actually play a beat. I'm gonna map all the kicks to the same button, all the snares to the same button. And then I'm going to put my hi-hats over here so I can play with my other hand. Hi-hats here, snares here. Kicks here. Kicks are a mess. And I can move them to see which ones play. These kicks all suck. I want like, you know what? We're gonna go back to square one. Delete them all. I'm gonna try just picking one kick. Bow. And something toppy. That's gonna be cool. So here we go. So we have our kick drum on the one button. We have our snares on the two. And we have our hi-hats on five over here. I'm having a real hard time hearing my kick drum over the full beautiful orchestral sound of the original sample, so I'm going to put a compressor on our sample track over here. Turn on the side chain, chain it to our kick on track four. And this will allow me to duck the signal It gets quieter. Now let's slow it down even more to like a real hip hop tempo. Fool, you got a good point. Why am I starting with zero headroom? That's because I'm doing this on a stream and I already have my limiter set up. Which my kicks are just totally blasting into there. Oh my gosh, the stream is causing a little bit of latency, which is making... Oh, I know what it is. It's the... um. It's the driver I have to use to share with OBS. Because all my keys are like pressing, like coming way out of time. Oh, it's so frustrating. I look weird without my outfit. Wow. Sorry. I can't do it, guys. I can't, I can't make the beat this way while sharing it with you on OBS. Sorry. Uh, we tried, but the basic gist is you can set up your drums to play on the keyboard and then actually like play a drum beat.
So it can be a lot of fun. Of course, I'm flying by the seat of my pants here because every time I hit the key, But I can't possibly play that over that sample, unfortunately. So I'm gonna save this thing and then I'm gonna just group these tracks and hide them for now. What a shame, that was gonna be really fun. I made a lot of fun beats that way recently. But that's okay, we'll go back to that spirit tracks thing that sounded good immediately. And um, we'll produce it, which will be more fun. You'll get to see more of the things that Ableton can do. So I'm gonna just, to get this thing really started, pull this thing over. Turn the sample back on, and what I did was I dragged the sample from one side of Ableton, I hit tab, dragged it over to the other, the timeline. This this probably looks, for you with, uh, for those of you with experience in other uh, digital audio workstations, other DAWs, this section may look a little bit more familiar. This is where we lay it all out. This is the section that's intended for live performance, and also a great place to sample and keep all of your assets. I like to start my beats in here, but when I get to arranging them, then I move them over. So I can pull this stuff over here, pull my drum loop, just paint it all down here. Get the hi-hats. Maybe start them eight bars in and do something fun. Let's listen to the sample and kind of arrange this thing. I'll pull out some more loops and we'll produce it with loops because that seemed to be working a lot better considering the latency that my system has uh, because I'm sharing this all with you. Sorry about that, um, but this will make a better sounding beat faster anyway. So, hooray. We can use our saved sidechain from the other song. You can listen to it. See how it kind of ducks? I'll pull it down really hard, you'll be able to hear it. That's not the sound we really want for this beat, but it's showing us that as the drums are hitting on one channel, the volume is changing on the other. This is allowing us to make more room in our mix. Trippy PC, yeah, I've done a lot of uh, stuff with LSDJ. I also made a couple beats on this old uh, computer tracker called Player Pro. Ableton's compressor is really cool. If I, for example, wanted to just listen to the kick drum and just have my sidechain affecting by when the kick, the low sound happens, I can hit this EQ button. Pop back over here. Hear that? That's just the kick. I could change it to a different curve and here are just the high end. So now I have a side chain that's controlled just by the kick. I'm gonna copy paste, make another one. That's awesome space guy. If you guys have questions about what I'm doing, please let me know in the chat. So by having a separate sidechain for my kick and my snare, I can create like this different kind of sound. And this is all based with the loop that we started. So we're basically extracting different elements out of this loop and then using them however we like. FLN and Ableton are very different, but the fundamental concepts that goes into making a good mix is the same across all stuff. That'd be a good place for a change up. I'm gonna make a marker.
will be our bridge. There's the key change. I'm just marking off the different parts of the song here. We're not gonna let it get there. We're gonna just go back to the beginning. That's where it starts. We call this the verse, even though it's not really a verse. And this is the intro. So basically, without actually making the edits to the song, I've made myself a note of where the song is changing. And we're gonna basically build our beat around the existing song, rather than chopping it up, since the other workflow didn't seem to be working. DAW stands for Digital Audio Workstation. I still got the keyboard cam on, huh? This isn't helping so much, is it? Shorten the loop so we don't get the fill until right here, and I can change what part of the loop is going to play. I'll make it a different color. All right, we're finally starting to get somewhere. making sure that we're not running into this limiter too hard because that will affect the way our sound comes through. Typically, I don't mix with a limiter on my master the way it is right now, but for the purpose of this stream coming through nice and clear, I thought that delivering it to you guys at full volume during the whole process would probably be the safest way that you'll be able to hear what I'm doing and also hear what I'm saying. Mongomus, you got a good point. A little bit of variation goes a long way. So something that I have been noticing uh, that I often leave out when I'm working on beats is crash cymbals. So rather than leaving them out for the whole time, I'm gonna pick some and put them in now. Nope, that one. one shot. No symbols in this pack? That's okay. I got another pack with a crash symbol I really like. There it is. Very loud. It's very loud out of the gate. Apologies. I'm going to bring that way down. There we go. It's so nice, so clean. This is actually a trap. Uh, a trap pack from Prime Loops. But that, it only comes with that one crash symbol, and at first I was like, one crash, what a rip! And then I was like, oh, that crash works everywhere. So we're gonna play this, this crash in some strategic places. There we go. And a fun thing to also do is put reverse crashes in. So I can just hit this reverse button, and now it's back around. And a little trick I like to do is shave off just the tiniest bit of the reverse crash. This will give us like a little beat where there's no music. Here, I'll delete everything. You'll hear it. It kind of makes it pop afterwards. Actually, we got to leave it in the sample though. Nice, huh? <laughs> I 
You can never go wrong with air horns. I think you usually go wrong with air horns, but that's why they're so hilarious. This would be, since this key change, it'd be funny to make this like super fast. I want a cool like effect like there. And I just copied one into my Dropbox yesterday. Fua Fua time has got some got some he's you must be a producer because you got some good good feedback here. You're paying attention. <laughs> I have a great chip tune remix of that. I don't know. I like it full volume. Once we add delay and reverb though, it's really gonna come into its own. Shoot, you guys distracted me in the chat again. What was I getting? I was like, I have a really great oh yes, my Some of you who have been following me for a while may have heard these samples before. I use them a lot. Ableton gives you this cool ability to uh, fade any piece of audio like this. Just add fades to wherever you want. Cool, huh? I just started watching uh, K-On, and I just totally love it. Me and Kevin Vileka were at uh, a con, and he had on his laptop, and we just like, he's like, you should watch this show with me, and I was like, all right, whatever, we're very tired, put it on. And I was just so arrested by it. It's just so wonderful. <laughs> Hi, Hardcore Coder. I have a fun idea for this part. We're gonna put it back to this kind of hi hat. Bup, 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 bup. And see, you can see I can change the start point of any loop in Ableton, and it will update in my arrangement view. So, for example, if I didn't like the kind of flickery hi hats here, I can just change the start point, and it'll to a part where that doesn't exist, and then boom. I can also do a fun thing here by switching my mode to complex pro I can change my little pitch envelope where is it volume transpose modulation and let's see how this sounds I just want to hear what it sounds like going up that's what I had in my head was going up typically this goes like down yeah it gets to, it like dissolves so we're gonna to have to go down Oh, how hype is that little kick drum thing? Uh, I did that pretty quick, so here, I'll undo it and show you again. So this is the loop. And I just want this kick sound. I just want it to play four times, just bump, 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 bump. So what I do is I select a quarter note by just holding down shift and clicking. And then I can control D, 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 insert D jokes. And then now I have those four kicks. And it can happen really, really fast. This is one of the big reasons I love Ableton um, for cutting up and rearranging samples. Uh, it's just so fast. It's just so great. Hello, McTrunksina. Antron, uh, there is no MIDI in this session at all. These are all audio clips. These are all samples. And most of the way that I make music is with samples. 
I, um, just get really loud at that tempo. Let's bring them down. Another cool thing in Ableton is you can adjust the volume of individual clips if you want. So without having to automate any kind of thing on the hi-hat channel, I can just bring a specific clip down. Skittles, thank you for that host. Now, I think maybe there's a bit too many hi-hat rolls. Oh, something happened. Oh, thank you for the follow. Mictrontina. Sorry, I said your name in an awkward way. Suspense, thanks for the follow. So what I'm doing here is I'm going through and just duplicating and copying and pasting different parts of this hi-hat loop to change it. As you can see, I'm kind of hopping around where in the loop we're hearing and we're changing stuff. And so I'm able to modify the loop without having to go in and tweak any MIDI or uh, manually insert notes just by copying and pasting different part of the samples. Now Ableton does something really cool that I've started to see more um, audio programs do is it automatically adds fades whenever you cut audio and if we zoom way 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 in we can see them there it is by default these fades are only four milliseconds long which is super duper short but it's a significant amount of time it's enough to make sure that when we don't cut the audio we don't hear a pop or a click let's take a look at this little hi-hat sample this is a tiny super duper short so short I tried to zoom in on it and I lost it Let's go. There it is, we're so, so close in, Hardcore Coder, thanks for the follow, that we can actually see the stepping of this super duper micro tiny short sample. Now, you can see at the beginning where there's no sound, it's right in the middle. If we cut a sample when it's not at the middle, when it's at the top or the bottom, the program is gonna have to manually draw a line to zero to make the sound stop. In the olden days, in days of old Pro Tools and other uh, dawn of digital recording software, if you didn't get that signal back to zero before it got cut off, you would hear a pop or a click of the computer forcing it back down to zero so you wouldn't hear that sound just go on forever. But because Ableton automatically adds these super short fades to every cut we make, we never hear a pop or a click when we edit a sample. It makes it a lot faster for us to go and just make edits to audio like crazy without having to worry about popping and clicking happening all over the place. Let's hear our song as it is so far. Fool Fool in the says in the chat, even when the fade is super short, it can mess up your transient. I'm going to add that can into your comment. It can mess up a transient, but not necessarily. That's why it's very important to know where you're cutting your audio. For example, I make a little cut here. It's probably fine. I make a cut right here, like within this thing, and we can zoom way in. Look at those fades and see, oh, Ableton was smart, it didn't touch it, but if maybe if I cut just a little bit too close, now we have a fade that's occurring over this beginning part of the sample. This could cause a problem. Well, see? And as soon as I remove these two clips and Ableton actually made the cut real life, we could see that we lost this big bulky part of the sample. See, I'll just pull these apart, and now you can see this whole big spike, which is critical for our snare sound, is gone. That's why when you're cutting your samples, you have to really make sure 
uh, that you're cutting to the right place. Right before the thing starts is great. Right inside of it could cause problems. And back in my Pro Tools days, when we would cut little bits of audio like this, we would look super painfully close at as close to the spike as we could get, but when it was still at a zero point. So like maybe right here. Ableton doesn't even let us see a line for zero because you don't really need to do it in this program, but Pro Tools would have showed us that. Anyway, thank you Ableton for making it, making, allowing us to make music faster by adding these cool features. Of course, can they cause a little bit of a problem? Yeah, it's possible. But that's why I have to keep our minds out. Crazy Kyler, thank you for the, for the subscription, oh my gosh, thank you for subscribing. Crazy Kyler, thank you for supporting the stream. Enjoy those emotes. Tripping PC, this is at a 1080p monitor, but I have it set up so that the chat is actually here so I can read it and get distracted by it, clearly. We have the second loop. Let's add this somewhere else. The bridge might be a nice place for it. Richie M with a great comment, yes. Soundforge called it auto zero point selection, allowing you to crop your auto your audio and automatically find that zero point where there wouldn't be a pop. Those effects really come in handy, don't they? Yeah, I want I want to add different sounds. Oh little train noises! Skittles that's such a good idea! I wonder if I can find him anywhere. Okay, I found him. Let's look for no problem. No problem.dejo.org slash Zelda sounds. There it is. There's no train sounds in this library. Instead of air horns, use train sounds? Yeah, I would love that. I mean, there must be train sounds in Spirit Tracks. The train hype train. Uh, Spirit Tracks train sound effects. I hope it's not a YouTube link. Oh, freesound.org's got some. Uh, just some stuff. Mess. This is a soundtrack, which we do not want. We just want the sound effects. Oh well. Freesound.org. Yeah, we were just looking at it. People say that it's gross. Okay, someone said train horn, max seven seconds. Perfect. Um, we're looking for the Spirit Tracks train horn or something close to it. Oh, that one's great. That one is a muddy low end mess.
All right. Log in to download. Ah, oh, but I, I do have an account, but from a billion years ago. I need to add rail sounds. Oh man, this is gonna be tough, and I don't want to log in and have you guys see my username or log into my email. Hey. You guys all seem to know what's going on in the chat. Does anybody want to retrieve some of these sound effects while I mix this thing? And then we could put it in. It'd be a collab. It'd be a whole chat collab. Record from Stereo Mix? Yeah, toot. Yeah, if you guys want to grab any of these sounds, uh, that would be great. Here's the one I found. Yeah, I'm not using Soundflower. Nope. Also, I'm on Windows, so uh, I can't. But, uh... Why don't somebody grab me those sound effects, put them up on a Dropbox or something. Let's mix this thing. Let's grab some EQ. Let's clean up the original sample. This is my favorite EQ of all time. Fab Filter Pro Q2. Look at this thing. It just sounds so nice. Get a little more high end or sparkle. And roll off the low end. And make them razor sharp cuts. Look at this. Maybe I want to just boost the bass. I can make a nice little little plateau here. Glenn Ty, yeah, this EQ. Yo, so you guys, you want me to add some sound effects? Get them for me, please. Let's do it together. It's Sunday. It's been a long week. You guys want some sound effects? Just get them to me. Get them me waves or MP3s, link them to a Dropbox, upload them to something. Crazy Kyler has got it. Crazy Kyler. So for me, I'm rolling off below 50 hertz, but that's because I know this sample doesn't have a lot of sub bass. And actually, we really want the kick to come through as the sub bass in this drum and bass track. Oh, somebody did something. Doomsbury, thanks for following. As we work on this beat more, we may want to adjust this EQ. I'm already thinking of some ideas that I'd like to try, but for now, it's a nice little boost to our bass. I actually see I'm cutting off a little bit more than I need to. Crazy Kyler's got this. Let's listen to this sound. Back to the beat. Train sound as a clap. I don't know. Should we add some claps? I can't hear claps like this. I, I want to get it, but it's like Dropbox is like, I don't know. Claps is okay sometimes, but not all of the times. Anybody took a peek in my downloads folder can see that yes, I downloaded my own album, and yes, it's in flack just for posterity. I also have Super Mario Galaxy tunes in there. That Gusty Garden Galaxy. Oh. oh, this is great, great. It's so quiet, we can barely hear it. Let's unwarp it so Ableton's not touching it. We can boost the level really big like this, right within the clip. So I'm not doing any automation or anything. I'm just cranking up the gain. It's so cute. It is the perfect sample for this remix. Real train. Look, we can see we got a bunch of low end nonsense here. So let's just roll that off with some pro Q. Toot. Now let's compress it because I'd really like to have like a sort of beefier. I love the tone, the timbre of this thing, but I love it to just be a little bit more fuller. So I'm going to use a guitar compressor, the Renaissance AXX. I'm putting the compressor now before my EQ. This is probably gonna be the biggest tip of this whole thing for you producers out there. Uh, always, 
And of course, there's not a definite rule, but I'm going to say always anyway, because always compress before you EQ. And the best way I can think of is with a shoddy metaphor. Your EQ is the knife that you cut your cake with. Your cake is the sound, okay? Your finished track or whatever it is, is your cake, all right? And your EQ is your knife that you use to cut it, you know, just how we cut this audio here. And your compressor is your baking it. It's you're making it into a solid thing. So by reducing the dynamic range with a compressor and making it a more solid, thick sound, you'll easier be able to cut it. If you try to cut your cake before you bake it, like, you know, basically just making a big mess. And that's what it sounds like. Nice. And the compressor is giving us a little bit more of the, like, breathy toot. We're also hearing some of the buzzing from the original recording. So I'm going to shave it down and then use these fades to get it out. Noisy recording. We can really hear the noise now that that, uh... Now that it's compressed. Hmm. You double the sound. Toot, toot. Okay, good idea. Good idea. I'm gonna call this track the toot. I'm gonna duplicate the toot. And, actually, since we're duplicating it, I can roll off some of this. Yay. Oh, Skittles. This is a, this is, this is train tracks. We needed this too. Trains 002.mp3. Trains. All right, that'll be a great intro. Toot toot. And this is Kaboot. I am making sure that this project file, it becomes completely illegible. You don't need the two, many of the tracks. Now let's get these things on beats. And I'm gonna just transpose this one down so we don't hear exactly the same tune. Too far down, tuning it back up a little bit. Gee, I think it might sound better tuned up a little bit. Zycode, thank you for the follow. <laughs> boop, boop. Tough getting these two to cooperate. Big train crash at the end. You know what? I'm gonna try putting these on the same track. Maybe if they're together and faded into one another, they'll sound a little more natural. Mulsu, thanks for the follow. All right, we're getting there. Derpabine, thanks for the follow. I thought you followed yesterday. Oh well, who's counting? From Plays, thanks for the follow, everybody. Sounds like the train sound comes a little too early. Are the toots? Hi, 
my vision shot. Yeah, you're right. You're right, team. Hey, Tasha, what's up? All right. Ridiculous Reality 101. Thanks, Derperbine. That's weird that you're following and unfollowing, but whatever works. Vision shot. Thanks for the follows. You want to lengthen the hold on that bass hole notes in the beginning. I don't understand. But you gave me a good idea. Let's put some multi-band compression on the sample. It'll let us really shape the tonal quality of the thing. Oh, but I have other ideas. Well, let's do what I said first. This is the Waves C16, a wonderful revolutionary plugin, or rather it's a big brother of the revolutionary plugin, the C4. It gives us six bands of compression in one plugin. And you could do stuff like being like, oh, I want it to sound like the hi-fi exciter. Sure, and now all of a sudden the sample sounds like this. I don't like that one, Never mind. Uh, let's put on strings A. Screw all these presets, full reset. We can pick our different bands. I don't know how well you guys are hearing if you don't have a subwoofer or headphones on. But I can do things like... Expand this. This will give it a little bit more like sort of smatteriness this too. I want to expand these frequencies, make them a little bit more dynamic. I boosted my bass way too much, but... So here without it, I'll turn it on. giving us more control over the different parts of the sound, allowing me to boost my bass and also, while well, also keeping it under control. Oh, that really brought the bass of the sample out. Listen, it's kind of flat now. Let's hear it all sounds together. Oh, fool, fool, with the great questions. I'm using the compressor to boost the sub frequencies, yes. But what I'm cutting is not actually the bass, it's the sub bass, the really, really low stuff. So, which, for this recording is nothing, basically. This is a game music, so they weren't pushing signals out around 30 hertz and below. In fact, very few songs actually do. But the, C the C6 is allowing us to target this whole range, which goes all the way up to 92 hertz, containing the actual bass. And then this separate band, which is around 100 hertz. Where is it? There it is. So by rolling off these very low frequencies, this is not actually to cut the audible bass of the sample. It's to allow us more headroom for our drums and other instruments, the really low end thumping that we want to come through. So you can see if I turn this off, there's almost no audible difference. The difference is purely technical, giving us more room to add other elements or additional headroom that allow us to make our mix louder in the end. We'll do another cool, since you guys kind of like that, those cool tricks, this is another cool one. I'm going to use, uh-oh. This plugin has a little bug on Windows where it likes to crash if I open it while music's playing. Terrible bug. Um, uh, well, Glenti, really good thing. You said that uh, now that you can, now that the compressor's on, you thought that you can hear the bass better. It sounded closer to staccato before. Because it's compressed, 
a staccato sound will sound more flat and even. The staccato is uh, defined by those short sound notes. But by compressing it, the dynamic range of those things is reduced, and now we're closer to a more even sound. Yep. Fua Fua, we are cutting below 32 hertz to get technical. So it really, you wouldn't hear it on only the biggest hi-fi systems. And again, we don't need those frequencies in the sample, but they do exist in the drums. So we're not cutting it entirely in the whole mix. We're just taking it out of one track so it'll exist in another. I'm going to use this plugin, the Ozo Imager, to control the stereo left and right of the sample. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bass and make it center and take a look at the rest of the thing. Maybe we want something wider or more together. I had a feeling this was going on. Game music often has really wide bass because it's not intended to be heard in a big sound system with a subwoofer. Sure, some games will do it, but what will give us more clarity in the middle, in the, um, well, spoiler alert, I said it, in the bass frequencies is bringing it into the middle. And it's very easy to do with this plugin. I can just pull down this bandwidth. And now we can see, what this is telling us is that the all of the bass frequencies are occurring dead center, which means exactly the same in the left speaker and the right. Before, it was all over the place. And this gives the ability for the bass to face with itself or with other, in, with other instruments. So by pulling it to the center, we know that all the bass notes are going to be dead center, exactly the same in the left and the right. And this is significant because subwoofers are mono. It's one speaker. So it can't differentiate between left and right. So if we want the bass of this track to come through nice and full in our sub, then making it mono is a surefire way to make that happen. We could do other stuff with this plugin too, like test how it will sound if it was only the whole thing played in mono with this switch. See, it gets much narrower, but we can still hear everything. That's good. I'm clipping a little bit, but once we get to mastering, I'll go back and revisit some of that stuff. Actually, I can do that really easily in this plugin. Yeah, we use an OBS. You guys are seeing the plugins, right? OBS is showing you those, right? Okay, yes. Very okay, good. That would suck so much if I've been talking about these plugins and you couldn't see them. On my old streaming setup, you couldn't. Thirty-five is where the cuts are, Fua. But I appreciate your attention to detail. I can actually bring my EQ boost down a little bit now that we've compressed it. Hey, Lucas. Where are my two toots? Second one sounds a little early. I can hear it now. Boop, boop. Put these trains back in this little breakdown part. That is cool. Oh, I got goosebumps. Did you guys hear that? That's so cool. We get the toot on the right side.
you the train hype. I would love the ding, ding, ding. Anybody got it? This song's getting pretty sweet, and we don't have any reverb or any of like the stuff that actually makes everything sound good yet. Let's do that. Let's go to reverb. It's a little boring. Someone get the ding, ding, ding. All right, I'm going to show you guys my favorite reverb. It is an awesome plugin by a company called Valhalla DSP. It is Valhalla Room. It is $50. It is super cheap as far as plugins go, and it just sounds so good. What kind of, uh, kind of reverb should be used. I am, this is always the hang up of all my mixes is like, what reverb to use? A hall. I don't think a room makes a whole lot of sense. A plate probably would be. Let's do a plate. I'm going to solo the reverb. Everything's going to go quiet. Okay. Let's bring it up in the sample first. Okay, that sounds nice. I like it. Now, something I've been experimenting with a lot lately is the pre-delay time. I feel like if we get if you get the pre-delay right, it can just sound so awesome. So I'm gonna pull the mix down. So this is it without reverb. That's it with. I'm gonna put it in the middle and I'm gonna adjust this pre-delay. I'll boost the volume of this so you can hear it, because I know it's not super loud. The pre-delay is the time between when the actual signal is and when the reverb starts. So if I pull it really far out, it'll sound really crazy. A total cacophony. But if we get it right, you get this nice sense of distance, and also the mix will come out cleaner. I think this sounds really good, 24.7. Yeah, too far getting caught, right? This sounds like perfect to my ears, at least right now. Oh, Glenti with the ding, ding, ding. Yo, go team. Yo, stream team. Once we get the reverb on everything, uh, it, the, the tracks gonna really start like gluing together. All right, all right, we get it, we get it. You're dinging, we get it. Okay, you're dinging. We heard you first time. Thank you very much, train station. A Windows Media Player. Nobody wants you to do anything here today. Take it, take Sunday off, Windows Media Player. You're good. You're good. You're a good cookie. Okay. I don't know what that means. Oh, thanks, Glenty, a.k.a. SoundDogs.2. Now, oh, the tricky, tricky, trickiest. How are we going to crop out just a couple dings? I want three dings, as Ralph suggested. Ding, ding, ding. These are, these are not set for easy cropping of dings. Maybe the last three? Oh, yeah. We'll be able to get the last four. That Sabs. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, that Sabs. Let's listen to what the last four on these sound. What if we just took the last two? Whoops. Get this one. That way we don't have the ding, ding, ding. And then uh, we'll have two, and we can go ding one, ding two, ding one. And it won't be too obvious that we reuse the same samples. And then we don't have this, because I don't, I think the rhythm of this is a little too intense. And like, sure, maybe that's how trains ding. Like, well, freaking crazy. Just, I guess it should be like freaking crazy ding, 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 because there's a train coming. You don't get hit by a train. No one wants that.
dings. Glenta, you got it. Great minds think this think for themselves. Let's put the grid back on and make these dings musically appropriate. Oh, wait, before I do that, this will be the purple ding. This will be the light purple ding. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, there it is. It'll be like foreshadow the next part. All right, we're going to see. 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 Check it out. I'm going to zoom in here and zoom into this guy. And we can see, see how we're like not totally at the very start of the thing. Remember, we talked about that zero point. Well, now we can actually see where the zero points are. And look, there's barely any of them. I'm looking at a 1 2,000th and 48th node right now. So we are, we are deep. I can hit Command 4 on the keyboard and turn off grid. And then if we were doing this in old school Pro Tools day, we'd have to find a place where these steps are at zero. Luckily, we don't have to. Oh, look, I found one anyway. Look at that. Boom. Boom. If Ableton wasn't doing its sweet, sweet fading, this would still work. Let's check the other one. The other one looks okay. But we can be crude because we're in Ableton and it's going to take care of us. Although I found a zero point there too. Was that really sick? I couldn't tell. Um. Should the rhythm be different? I feel like one, two, three, four would sound good. Oh, there's five though. That might be nice. Yo, what's up, Whittler? Oh man, you caught a very exhausted Cutman Productions stream, dude. Um, thanks for tuning in, man. Let's try it like that. Yo, see how we're, we're just alternating between two different samples, but because we have two and we're not playing the same one right at one after another, it sounds like totally fine. Have a good day, Whittler. That's not it. We'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get it, folks. Ding, 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 ding. Yo, yeah. Five, Ralph. That's what I'm thinking too. Is that five dings on quarter notes sounded like we're gonna really work. I'm gonna show you old hip hop trick. I'm gonna bring this volume of the first two samples down just a little bit. So rather and I'll bring the volume of the last one down a little bit. So rather than automating it and taking a year and, and slaving over it, we're just lowering the volume of the samples. This is a relic from the old school tracker beat making days I had where automation wasn't a thing you had access to. So all you could do if you wanted to change a volume or change something is to import another instance of that sample at a different volume. And it gives a different quality than automation too because it is a rigid set volume for a certain thing. Um, it's got a different kind of quality and it's kind of chip tune and I, and I like it. So we're going to use that right here. Let me know what you think of how it sounds. Somebody in the chat. Um, somebody in the chat said something about a bell with the symbol. I don't know if that's what you meant, but that's definitely what I'm doing. I'm adding one more bell on the crash. Sick. 
six, huh? You crazy, crazy, crazy folks. We're gonna add one more ding. How about that? This will be a total of seven dings if we like the ding with the crash. That's what we're going for. That was sick. Yo. I'm really liking this beat. You want to know a fun idea that I just had? Let's take the dings and layer them over the crashes. So now every time there's a crash symbol, which happened throughout the beat, there's also going to be the train dings. So we're like subconsciously hinting at trains the whole time. This is what one of them sounds like. We got to bring the volume down though if we're going to sneak it in like this. We're going to swoosh in the dings. Try the other sample. That was okay. <laughs> That's a better sample. I'm stoked. And the only time we're not going to get that sample is... No, actually, we can do it the whole time. But we'll make this one longer. And we're not going to get the ding here because I don't want to spoil it. What are Linder doing? Oh my god, we're crushing everything. <laughs> Train hype around. Oh, Super fast high hat section was really high. Toot toot. Tate more far. Thank you for the follow. Let's have those toots. St. Nick Gaming. Thank you for the follow, everybody. We'll get there. We're going to warp the second one, and we are going to drag it out so it's longer because I want to be boot, boot. So this is, we haven't talked a whole lot about warping. But this is it. Look at how I can just stretch out that sound. Not too far. And we're going to have to stretch this one out just a little bit so that it's not too crazy different. We're changing these to Complex Pro, which will give them a slightly higher quality, maybe. To boot to toot.
<laughs> this is how I look normally. Also, whenever I'm doing like panels or lessons at uh, conventions or anything, uh, I try not, I can't wear the helmet because it's kind of harder to talk and certainly harder to like listen and, and get feedback. So um, I don't know if I'm at the level of superhero music performer where I can like wear the suit at all times and still function. I'd rather have a good lesson than, uh, than I don't know. <laughs> Also, I'd never be able to do this dance with my suit on because the shoulders, the shoulders are too big. I put on a nice shirt for you guys. And a, and a shirt that had the same color chroma key green as my background, so that wasn't the best color. Yo, the latency is so real using this driver though. Yo, what is that blue triangle? I see it. Oh, it's where the green screen ends. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yo, good eye. How did I not even see it? No, that's the wrong button. Me? Chill. All right. Stream team. Am I okay? No. <laughs> that's what I get for hitting that button. Good eyes. Sorry, that. Are you trained for this? Are you trained for this cut, man? What does that mean? I worked as a studio engineer for four years. I um, took music production classes. I I took some after I graduated college. I took music production and music theory at Berkeley College of Music. Um, so I don't have a teaching degree. I'm not Pro Tools certified, <laughs> because if I was, I'd probably have a job teaching somewhere, um, and it would be frustrating because I wouldn't be able to make music because I would be teaching all the time. But who knows? Who knows? That would be a different life. Oh, trained. I get it. Like, like, like. I guess I am now. I can't believe I, uh, I can't believe I didn't get to that. You know what? If you guys are gonna troll me like that, then we're mixing reverb now. That's what weird, that's what you get. We're gonna mix the reverb. Totally the most boring part. So the idea, this is the way I mix reverb. I don't know how this is how other engineers do it, but this is how I've done it and it always seems to work out. I solo my reverb send, so all we're hearing is the reverb right now. And I'm just going to slowly introduce all of the elements to that send with these little knobbies. I'll show you. They're over here. Till it has a good sound. And then I'm going to unmute the reverb and hear the whole track and see if that works out. It usually does. A lot of hi-hats, a lot of drums. Oh, one thing I'm gonna do before I continue is I'm going to use, I'm gonna low, I'm gonna EQ out the low end before the reverb. This is a critical part. It'll keep the reverb from having to process the bass and the kick sounds, which we don't really want going into the reverb anyway. Chat's got jokes. Yeah, that was a good pun, Anthro, all right? You did good. So now with the low end not going into the reverb, I can hear the hi-hats a lot more clearly. Here, I'll crank it up for you. And hear like, good God. The dings need reverb. That's a lot of ding. What else do we got down here? We have these up filters and down filters, which probably won't need a whole lot of reverb.
Like, the only thing that's missing reverb is toot. I think the toot sounds good with some reverb on it. This is like a deli delicate balancing act. Tasha Skos, thank you for the thank you for the host. Yeah, I've been saving like a lot. It's actually kind of unfortunate now that I'm on Windows. I keep all of my projects on a Dropbox. Uh, Ableton doesn't necessarily have automatic backups, but when if it crashes, it allows you to restore everything up to the last action you did. All right, let's listen to everything. Is our friend Fuwa Fuwa time in the chat still? Because Fuwa Fuwa, right at the beginning of the stream, goes, man, you're starting mixing at a really loud volume. Shouldn't you start quieter? And I said, no, I don't need to start quieter because it's the stream and I want it to be loud. Well, now we can look at our limiter, which is set to zero, and it's just getting crushed. Our track is just getting annihilated. So I got to turn everything down. But luckily, the way that I've mixed it, I haven't used any sends other than the reverb, which I'm going to name reverb. Ableton has this cool ability to select all, and then I can just bring down everything. Now let's look at our thing. Now we have some headroom. Not a lot, but enough that we'll be able to finish this beat. Um, oh, you guys are being nice in the chat. Thank you. I've been doing this a long time. I've been engineering, gosh, probably like close to 10 years now, if not over that. So that's crazy to think about. Let's put a compressor on our master channel. Now that all the elements are there and the reverb's there. Oh my God, it sounds great already. I love this compressor. It's very expensive for software. Um, I bought it in my youth when I was working as a recording engineer and I'm so glad I did because I use it every time, all the time. And it sounds great. This is the Waves SSL Pop. Hey, if anybody is in the market for Waves plugins, I can provide you my referral link, which gives you 10% off a purchase and also gives me 10% to spend towards more plugins. So it, it helps me, it helps you. So if you're interested in buying some of these plugins I'm using, uh, just let me know. I'll give you my link and it'll be great. Hooray. Yo, this is going to be a free download. Don't you worry. Don't you worry, Ralphington. You like this clab in space guy, huh? I, I love people getting samples for me, so. Sir Staffer, thanks for the follow. You're gonna get any of the waves of working on Windows 8. Zimbolt, I'm on Windows 8.1 and everything's working great. Evening, Sir Stafford. Is it evening now? Gosh. Zimbolt, don't cry. Don't cry, my little, my little face emo. <laughs> oh, something that did happen when I turned on the volume of everything, my reverb also got quieter because it's doing post faders on all this stuff. So I'm going to have to rework the reverb a little bit. Anthro, man, I don't want to answer that question. Waves has a bundle that's almost $10,000 for plugins. Oh, Mongamus has a good point. I'm using all 64 bit versions of my Waves plugins, and I'm using the 64 bit Ableton.
you see waves vlt host zimbolt it's the thing that you should see is called waves shell and it should open up into all the plugins um, it's possible that you need to run the Waves Shell registration utility, which searches your Waves installation and adds all the plugins you have to the shell. Also, you'll need the pain in the ass Waves licensing center to actually get your licenses so the plugins will work when you drag them on to a track. Oh, Glentai, um, can you see? You can see the keyboard. Look, I'll hit the space bar. I hit it again. I hope that answers your question about latency. There's like a second and a half of latency right now. I'm using the MME DirectX driver, which is the only one that will work with OBS, will be picked up by OBS. When I use my Scarlett's uh, ASIO driver, it's great. It has virtually no latency, and like as I, as I was trying to do at the beginning of the which is play drums on this thing. Um, I actually can play a beat from scratch in real time um, with the Osseo driver on my Focusrite. Ridiculous. I have not used FL Studio, but now that I'm on Windows, I'm thinking about trying it out. Oh, Anthro, I didn't really answer your question. Some Waves plugins are super expensive, but some are really affordable, and they do sales a lot. So, like, if you're in the market for a good limiter, the Waves L2 often goes on sales for 100 bucks or $50. Bucks. Um, the a Waves has a lot of great compressors, guitar stuff. Um, fun crap like this. Which I think is pretty ugly. I don't know if you like to use it, but... Very informative. Yeah, FL Studio workflow is different. Yeah, when you get Ableton working though, man, it's just a blast. Cause like, this beat sounds great to my ears, and how long have we been doing it? Like, just a little over an hour. Yeah, exactly. I, the only reason I would change to FL is that FL has some cool features that I would love to explore. All right, something that I know from doing a lot of video game music is that a lot of times the video game source tunes don't have the high end, the sparkle that I want. So we can use this and a harmonic exciter by Ozone to crank it up. I'm gonna crank it up really high so you can hear what the effect. That's pretty intense. Hey, Nina! Are you guys home? Are you guys back in Philly? I want to do Game of Pies, but I want to do Game of Pizza Pies. Getting a little toasty up in the high meds. Ooh, I like the way tape sounds. Anthro, I'm using the Scarlett 18i8, mostly because it was the one that came with four microphone preamps. And uh, it's big. It's very big. And I often use two of those inputs. I'm not going to push my luck, though, and do oversampling on this project since we're streaming. Which are my sidechains back off? They've been off for who knows how long. Oh, now I'll tame them. Now that the mix is all together. So a fun thing I like to do is sort of set up all my effects kind of crudely at the beginning of a project and then get all of my elements in. Once all the elements in, that's when I like to add reverb, if you remember. Then I go back to each track, fine tune the EQ, and also compressors and other stuff. This is sounding really good though. The sample alone with the sidechain and everything else. We're crushing some stuff. 
Oh, this is expansion, okay. What's getting crushed? Oh, the mids. the hell's with these super long release times? Yeah, like there's a bunch of like weird settings I didn't even realize were on. There we go. We are not, hey Jacob, welcome to the stream. We are not using any MIDI in this project. These are all samples. We're not using, it. the libraries I'm using are mostly from the drums. The, everything we're hearing right now is a sample from Spirit Tracks. So all I'm doing right now is re-engineering the sample. You give me just a moment. I will start the track over, you'll hear all of the other production that we did. Here we go. Uh, I'm using a mic, and it's a USB mic that's running direct into OBS, so the Scarlet is only processing the sound out of Ableton, and OBS is mixing the sound you're hearing with my voice. I've never tried Sound Radix Pi. Sounds, sounds complicated. Sounds a little crushy. I wonder if we're crushing it. Not too crushed. Thanks, Adam. Square painter. Do you listen? muted the mic when I picked it up and showed you guys. Oops. Wow, everybody. <laughs> How long was I out for? Oh, that's a smart move, Anthro. Am I still muted? Okay, good. Oh, Zimbal, that's so cool. It changes phase, huh? Automatically through your whole mix? That sounds crazy. Oh, ridiculous! I grew up playing saxophone. I played music my whole, my almost my whole life. I took some courses in college, and then I took stuff after I graduated. Um, but I got hard and fast training as a studio engineer in a Pro Tools hip hop studio in upstate New York, and that's where I learned most of the engineering stuff and just generally how to be a good engineer. Here's our spectrum. We can take a look at our song overall. See, our bass is the highest. That's Right? Yeah, this processor, this computer is pretty intense. Like I have, the fact that I have the L316 like on this while streaming is just like so awesome. I am using a trackball, you can see it, right? There's the ball. Zumbolt, I gotta check that out, man. That sounds awesome. Let's just see what's after the loop.
That's the loop. Oh yeah, Nina, put, uh, if you're listening in the car, you should try uh, putting it on audio only, and then you can just leave the chat up. Let's work on our drums. <laughs> I know why I like this sample. It's super clean. I don't even touch it. You want to hear without the spirit track sample? Yeah, that's fine. That's actually that's a really good exercise. We should do that. All right, we're turning the spirit track samples out, just listening to the arrangement. All right, let's go from the beginning. This will give me a good chance to set up some delay, which will give us uh, some more cool coolness. <laughs> That's nice. Oh man, if Brent, Brent and Floss started getting on Twitch, I don't even know what happened. Yeah, that fluttery sound is coming from this delay. There's our big toots. Let's listen to our crashes. All right, this delay is cool. This is again without the sample. Two, two. I had some fills in there I never used. Oh my god, the anthro gave me the critique. You basically just added the drums. Yeah, and re-engineered the whole sample to work with the drums. This is a remix. I only added drums. Oh my gosh. It's like you didn't see the DJ in front of my name. Like, it, I'm, it's not composer cut man. It's not arranger cut man. It's not MIDI transcription cut man. It's about how the music sounds. If you like how it sounds, then great. If you don't like these beats, well, then you don't like these beats. Let's hear it back from the beginning. 
It's a common critique, and, and Anthro, I'm not trying to single you out. Um, it is the YouTube troll comment of choice, and I'm used to it at this point. Um, I'm an engineer. My background is in audio mixing and engineering, and that's what I love to do with video game music. I couldn't drop full steam ahead from the Legend of Zelda The Spirit Tracks at a live concert, like at a dance music concert or a show. But I could drop this, and this is what I like to do. I like to mix and literally remix. The term remix, a lot of people, it has gotten kind of cloudy over the past few years. But what I'm doing are literal remixing of video game music and chip tunes. Because, gosh darn it, that's what I like to do. This has always been the plan, at least for, for Cutman. It was always about remixing, cutting up, and changing audio. Using that stuff that I love and putting it in a new context so I can enjoy it again. And you know, in turn, all of my uh, all my friends and listeners can enjoy it too. Also, I did this whole thing in like an hour and a half. A more elaborate remix would rely a bunch of other stuff. Electrism, have I tried composing? Yeah, before I started DJ Cutman, I wrote a bunch of tracks for like commercial music libraries, and that was just, that was not very fun for me. I mean, it was fun making the track, but then like to send it off to like a publishing company that they would change the name and then ask me to like do some like, could you give it more pump or something? It's like, oh gosh, I just, I just wanna make, I just wanna, Work the music I like and make the music I like. And if you guys like it too, that's great. Did you like that, Skittles? It's all about having fun and making good music. If it sounds good, it is good. And while some people prefer completely original or completely rewritten tunes, um, and I like some of that stuff too, for me, the music that I want to make and the art I want to make is sample-based around the stuff that I already love. Because, gosh darn it, I just want to mix. I'm a DJ after all. I actually probably will add sub bass and some other instruments to it, but as you can see, all I'm doing it is with a keyboard. So will the final product if this makes it onto an album, get more work and some MIDI instruments, yeah, almost definitely. But for the purpose of just making a beat, I just made a beat. Oh, but you know what? You know what? I have a great example. I've been thinking about this for a while because I get that comment all the time. You just added drums. You just added drums. Why don't we listen to what it sounds like when you just add drums? Because people say it a lot and it's frustrating for me as an engineer being like, well, people just simply don't understand what I do. And that's okay. So why don't I take the exact same beat, okay, and the exact same sample that we've been working with. I'm going to turn off all the warping. I'm going to turn off all the mixing. We'll put on two fresh new tracks that don't have anything on them, and we can hear what it sounds like when you just add drums. Okay, you ready? How's that? This is what happens when you just add drums. I'm DJ Cutman. Thank you for joining my panel. I hope you all learned something today. So there you go. You know, a lot of people work on music that aren't the glamorous songwriters or producers or whatever. There's mix engineers making all of your favorite songs. There are mastering engineers and studio assistants and gear techs and all these people doing all this important critical stuff to making great music. And it's easy as the audience to just see the pop star or just hear of the producer's name and be like, yeah, that's the shit. But there's all these pieces that goes into making great music. 
I'm a sound engineer and no jokes about it. That's what I wanted to be when I was just getting started. I remember I walked into a studio in upstate New York um, with this famous old engineer and he asked me, well, what kind of stuff do you want to do? What do you want to learn? You want to get better at making guitar, making rock records, what? And I, as a weird little kid said, I want to get better at mastering. And he looked at me like, that's like the least fun thing that I can think of. But for me, you know, that's what I want to do. I love the polish. I love making a track as good as it can be. I love working with another musician, like some of the great guys on my label, like Micah, who's in the chat right now, um, and making their songs as good as they can be. And I love writing my own music, but it's a different process for me. So when I'm at work, I'm focusing on what can I do to make this song great. And when I'm remixing as DJ Cutman, I'm thinking, what can I do to this video game song I already love to make it different, but just as good as the original and work for me in a DJ set or work for my audience in a way they want to hear. So that's my mission as a DJ. That's, that's my goal as a sound designer and an audio engineer to make these tracks sound great bring them to a new context, but keep that essence, that thing that I really, that I really originally loved about the songs. <laughs> Preach it. Thanks guys. Thanks for listening. I think this track's pretty much done. Uh, I'm going to throw some mastering uh, effects quickly on the master. You'll be able to see a little bit about how I do that. And um, now that I've ranted, I think this qualifies as a good stream, <laughs> right? Something for YouTube. For buying, what's your question? What's your question, bud? I'm gonna push my luck and put a multi band compressor on this thing. Let's see if it holds up. This CPU, though. Richie, I already did the how to make a chiptune DJ set uh, panel. It's up on YouTube. If you go to the This Week in Chiptune YouTube channel, which is just youtube.com slash This Week in Chiptune, uh, we did that presentation right uh, before the ending of the Groupies bundle. So that's already up. You can rewatch it. This is hard with the amount of latency this thing's giving me.
This song is starting to sound really sick. So by treating each of these bands separately, I'm able to really, really get everything just playing loud and full and in control, so to speak, throughout the whole song. Bye, Tasha. Thanks for hanging out. Oh, Derpabine, Xenobrains Chronicles, that's what we started. So we're going to do my favorite, favorite exercise when we're done with this master. You guys are getting to see me master too. This is like not stuff that I always like to share, so. I can't really talk about it. I just don't, I've been mastering for years now, but it's just like I'm not at the, at the fluidity level with it where I can talk about it while I'm doing it. So it's, you'll just have to like, kind of glean what you can from watching. See a vision shot. A Zimbolt, I have it, that's with UAD stuff, but it's supposedly the best. So let's see the channel we have. Oh, I can talk you through what's on the master now that the, the face it, the bare bones. This is my bare bones mastering chain. Master bus compressor glues everything together. Multiband compressor, it gets all the different sounds under control, all the different areas of the frequency. We got our imager making the mid range wider and the bass in the center. Our exciter, which is adding additional frequencies to give us more sparkle in high end. And our limiters. Technically, this is eight, and this is another one, so there's nine limiters on it. Wait, two, four, six. No, seven limiters total. So, limiting, key step. Lastly, I'm going to throw an EQ on that master two with a special mode that's going to keep everything sounding great. <laughs> None of this stuff's too tough. It just uh, it takes a while. It takes a lot of practice and a lot of care. Rolling off some low frequencies, 25 hertz and below. And then this is a trick I learned from a dead mouse record, and I just do it because it always sounds good. I put a notch at 20,000 kilohertz, and I'm not sure why. It just seems to make everything a little bit nicer. One of my theories about it is that around 20K is where MP3s and YouTube videos get cut off. So by notching there, it makes it easier to convert. And then people who listen to like the full quality MP3s or album versions, there's higher frequencies above there from Spark. I know my CPUs only at 32%. How crazy. This computer is really, really rocking. I'm pretty stoked. I could not put a single instance of the L316 on this thing before, uh, before this. The bass is coming through so nice and clear now. Oh, I love it. I need coffee too, Nina. A1 culture. The cut pewter. Thank you for the follow. 
Joffrey, you know, I do. I should get that together, though. Uh, I do, but it's not listed. We got it. We got it. We got it. All right. So what I'm going to do for all of us um, is duplicate it twice. And then the second time is going to be a fade out. So we'll have a nice little, um, oh God. All right, so there's the loop. So you won't just be downloading. Uh, there is that more section, but if I'm going to get, uh, I don't want to, try to write more at this point in the mix because um, we got something really good here. So we're going to let it loop and then I'm going to add a fade out. So you'll be able to download this on SoundCloud for free right away um, as part of the groupies bundle. Thank you again, everybody who supported the This Week in Chiptune uh, Twic 100th episode bundle. You guys were so amazing. We hit all of our goals. So amazing that I'm going to use this plugin's elaborate fade out button rather than just automating a fade out. The fade out is too short. Still too short. Wow, when you don't, when you turn off delay compensation, everything gets wrecked. <laughs> Did somebody just come and spam, spam their SoundCloud link? Like, yeah, dude, like that, that's how all of the big name producers and DJs made it, by spamming their link in somebody's Twitch chat. Yeah, the goofiness, like the just like, like if you spent the time, if you took the time out of your schedule, your schedule, that you spend spamming people's Twitch channels and you just use that to research sample libraries, probably have some cool beats. Bruh, bruh. Bro, bro. Bro. Oh my god, you found the I'm rapping. It's not cool, man, because it doesn't help. And it's just disruptive. Like we're here listening to listening to this production that I've like been slaving over for the past two hours. And you think people are just gonna stop? and go and check out your somebody's random SoundCloud that just was popped up in the chat. If they do, that's kind of rude. And on you, you're just basically showing that you have no idea what's going on in this room. SoundCloud.com slash bro, bro. Oh, have fun, Nina. Maybe we'll see you later for Game of Pies. Let me know. Dakuni mode. Dakun, Dakun. This turned out pretty good. I really like it. I think we can like we trim down the mid-range a little.
Hey everyone, this is exciting. We are the top Twitch music channel that's not run by a robot. Yay! Coon friends, coon friends, Volvios, Volsevios, thank you for the follow. I do master mix house music, yes, a lot of it. I do a lot of mastering work, and I love mixing, but a lot of my like professional work is mastering. <laughs> Whose cloud is soundcloud.com slash bra? Is that a real thing? Because if it is, I'm like, I'm about to follow. Yo, somebody actually has soundcloud.com slash bra. It's bras, surely. Her name is Brun. All right, somebody said, do a different song now. Not gonna happen, but what we are gonna do is we're gonna pull a, we're gonna, hold on. Get it together, Cutman. It's been a long week. Uh, I'm gonna duplicate the sample track, turn it off, and take that Guar plane, that Zero No Braid Chronicles tune, and drop it over the arrangement we have now. It might work, it might not. Who knows, there definitely will still be train toots. Let's just check the start point. I gotta start actually here. Oh my god, it's like so fast. All right, let's see it. Let's see if this works. Uh, it probably won't. This song has huge kicks in it. All right, we have to make a few adjustments if this is gonna work. Um, and that mostly means cutting out these gigantic kick drums. Anther, if you need help mastering, dude, I, I do this stuff for hire. Uh, here, send me, uh, send me a message on Twitch, or you can email me, it's uh, videogamedj at gmail. It's the same as my Twitter and my, uh, Instagram and Snapchat and anything. Video game DJ, if, you, if you're interested, um, always looking for work. So let's listen to the Squire Plains now with the other beats over it. Kind of works. Those big kicks, though. There's like no way to just sneak those out. Some parts of it do. The train. So this was a fun exercise, and crap, it didn't work out. Parts of it does, like this is working. All right, enough of that, enough of that, enough of that. Well, that was a thing that happened. Uh, Anthro, my rate for mastering. Uh, I don't want to say my rate on this video, dude. I'll, uh, it's because uh, just send me an email and and we can talk about it. Uh, depending on the length of the track, I charge based on how long the track is and 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 stuff like that. But uh, I try to keep my rates reasonable. So just hit me up. <laughs> Yo, but I know that 19 got banned just now. 
But the thing that he said is the train whistle, whistle signifying that you're going to listen to a train wreck. That was pretty funny. I think that that was a pretty funny comment. I mean, that thing was a train wreck. I put like a completely different sample over the whole thing. I didn't do anything to it. So, if you're still listening, 19 at, that was funny. Sorry you got banned. I told you, hair trigger mods in this room. That's how it's got to be, though. People are cruel to the musicians on the internet. I don't know what it is. Um... <laughs> These things happen. Yo, sup, this is Ableton Live. Thanks for tuning in. The beat is done. I will probably, if this track makes it onto an album, which it probably will, because I really like it, um, I'll probably go in, add a sub bass. I may add other synths to accent the sample. But you, do, you guys don't want to watch me doing like synth sound design and like plonking around on piano, because it's a painful, tedious experience. This kind of stuff I can do quick, which is why I thought it would make a good presentation. So I hope you enjoyed it. Zimbolt, you're a good guy. Hey, listen, guys. Can't make fun of any. Don't make fun of any DJs, no matter what, how many woodblock samples they use in their tunes. You know, music. If it sounds good, it is good. So, just give every creative person you've ever come in contact with or heard of, just give them a break. Let them do their thing. If you don't like their stuff, don't consume it. It's nice and easy. Yo, the bells. Let's listen to that part one more time. Turned out so good. I'm gonna I'm gonna export this to SoundCloud for you. You'll be able to download it for free. Hooray. The latency is so real. Glenn Ty, is that a thing? All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this live remixing presentation. It turned out way different than I expected, but I appreciate all of you guys in the chat talking, um, checking it out. If you're watching it on YouTube, please take a, channel, a moment to subscribe to the channel. It does help out. And a big, big thank you to everybody at Groupies and everybody who helped and supported the TWIC 100 Groupies bundle, which made this presentation possible. So thank you so much. My name is Cutman. You can catch me every Wednesday night. 10 p.m. Eastern on Twitch for my show This Week in Chiptune, and um, on YouTube.com slash GameChops. That's my video game label. This track's going to be a free download on SoundCloud. If you're watching on YouTube, the link will be in the description. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> that derpy face. That derpy face. Oh.